Hey guys and welcome to this Next.js Fast Track tutorial. So this is going to be a kind of speed run tutorial on how to really quickly get set up with Next.js and build a static site with Next.js. So I've already got data available in a local WordPress site. So my data is already available to query within Next.js. I've got my example site here. So it's based on a real estate agent website. And this is actually based on a course I'm creating, a Next.js and WordPress course. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in that. However, all we really care about in this tutorial is we've got an endpoint or an API that we want to query and we want to generate pages based on our data returned from those endpoints. So the data I'm going to be working with is these two example properties here for our fake real estate agent website. And these are going to be queried via GraphQL. And my GraphQL endpoint is located at hotdianghomes.local slash GraphQL. So first things first then, we want to create a Next.js app. So to do that, I'm going to CD into my web projects and I'm going to run npx create-next-app followed by the name of our app. So I'm going to call it Hot Dang Homes Tutorial. So once that's finished running from here, I'm going to CD into Hot Dang Homes Tutorial and I'm going to open up in VS Code. And within our new project, then we can run npm run dev. So if we open up on localhost 3000, we can see the boilerplate Next.js app. So we're going to actually query our WordPress data, or in your case, it might not be WordPress data, any endpoint. I'm going to be using GraphQL for this. So we're going to need to install Apollo client and GraphQL. So let's go npm i at Apollo dash or slash client and GraphQL. So while those are installing, we need to add a new file in the root directory of our project, and we're going to call it apollo-client.js. And this is just going to set up our Apollo client for us to query our GraphQL endpoint. So there's a little bit of setup here. All we need to do is import Apollo client and in memory cache from Apollo client. Then we want to create a new const client set that equal to new Apollo client. And we want to pass in a URI here. So this is the endpoint that we're going to be querying for our WordPress data. So it's always good practice to put these things in an environment variable. So I'm going to add a dot env dot local file with WP underscore API and set that equal to hot dang homes dot local slash graph ql and actually i need to prefix this as well with http so now i should be able to access process dot env dot wp underscore api exactly the same what we've got in our dot env dot local there and we want to add a cache as well and that's just going to be a new in memory cache so all we need to do then is export default client so now we can use this client object to query our WordPress data. So quickly before we query any WordPress data, let's take a look at the directory structure of a Next.js project. So this pages directory is a special directory in Next.js in that if you add any files in this pages directory, Next.js will automatically build a root and a URL for that particular page based on its file name. So if I put test gym in here.js, and let's just copy everything from index.js for simplicity. So instead of this h1 here, let's go gym in there. Let's save this and npm run dev. If we go to localhost 3000 now, and if we go to slash test gym, we can see we've got our new page here based on the file name. So our file name was test dash gym and xjs has gone ahead and created a root for us at or based on this file name. So if we wanted nested routes, for example, we had a blog section of our site and we want to have a post one.js or so our, we want a root structure like our site.com slash blog slash post one. Then let's paste it all in there. Let's save that and let's go to blog slash post one. And I'm getting an error here and that's because it's referencing a file that I can't find. So let's just remove, actually, let's just remove all of this. And instead for post one, let's just put post one, h1 in there, 
Let's remove all of these. Now let's save and refresh. And let's go to blog slash post one. And there we go, we've got post one. So this is how we can create pages if we know what routes we need in our app. However, if we want to create dynamic routes based on, for example, our posts data in WordPress or any other page data from a CMS or headless CMS, then we need a way to dynamically create routes. So again, we're going to be using this pages directory. However, we're going to be using it slightly differently. So we can add a new file in here, but what we want to do is specify a dynamic part of the URL that we want to create. So if we put slug in here in square brackets and put .js, let's copy everything from index again. And again, let's remove everything from here. Let's just put h1 template in here for now. We want to get the props and console log the props. Let's remove all of this imports here. So what we can do from here is let's put in here properties. So we want to export default function properties because this is going to be my template for my properties data or my properties pages in my WordPress real estate backend. So just to quickly refresh your memory, I've got two properties here for my real estate, my fake real estate agent website. I want to grab the slug for each of these and dynamically create a page based on the slug in WordPress and I want to recreate it for my next website. So I'm going to quickly go into this first one just to show you that the URL slug for 24 Jiminy Place is 24 Jiminy Place. And it's going to be the same for 12 Albany Road as well. So what we want to do is export a async function called get static paths. Now it has to be called get static paths because Next.js is expecting this function to exist or that it can exist. If we called it something else like get static paths two, for example, then this isn't going to work because Next.js is not expecting get static paths two to exist. It's expecting that get static paths exists. So from this get static paths, we want to return an array of available paths based on our properties data in WordPress. So first of all, then we actually need to query that properties data in WordPress. So at the top here, we want to import our client from Apollo client. Then we want to go const data equals await client dot query. And within here, we want to import GQL from Apollo client. So this is going to execute our GraphQL query. Within backticks, then we want to paste our actual query. So our actual query is, I've already got the graphical IDE set up for my WordPress. So let's see what the routes are going to look like. Let's go to the query composer. I've got, I want to query for properties and slug. So let's hit play on this. And actually I need the property query. So property nodes and slug. And there we go. We can see we have our two property pages there. So let's go ahead and recreate that here. Then let's go property nodes and slug. And actually I'm running this client dot query function incorrectly. We need to pass a object to the client dot query and we want to pass a query property and then set the GQL to that query property within our client dot query. So from here, we want to return an array of our data and our data is going to be returned from this client dot query within an object so we can just destructure data from here. Then we want to return data.property.nodes.map. So we're following this pattern here. It's going to be returned to us the data as property.nodes. And this nodes is an array just like what we saw in WordPress here. We have data.property.nodes. So we're going to go data.property.nodes.map. And for each node, we want to return an object with a params key. In this params object, then we want to pass whatever we've called the piece of our URL in the square brackets. So we've called it slug. So we want to pass slug here and we want to set it to node.slug. So node.slug is referring to this node.slug here. And this slug here is referring to this piece of file name that we've placed within the square brackets. If this said Jiminy Cricket, then we'd need to set params 
to Jiminy Cricket instead. However, we've named it Slug, so we're gonna keep it as Slug. So from here, I've just realized we actually need to return an object from Get Static Paths, and it has to contain a paths property. And we just wanna set that paths property equal to our property map here. So we wanna return paths, and we also wanna return a fallback and set that to false. So the last thing we need to do now then is export async function get static props. And we're just gonna return an empty props object here just so we can see something on the page. And if we then navigate to, for example, 12 Albany Road, which is in our WordPress data, then we can see this template H1 here. If we go to 12 Albany Roads, then we can see it's a 404 page because that doesn't exist in our WordPress data. If we go to 24, what is it called again? I can't remember. 24 Jiminy Place. So 24 Jiminy Place. These aren't actual addresses, by the way. So it's 24 Jiminy Place and we're rendering that H1. So that is the really quick speed run on getting up and running and set up with Next.js and querying your WordPress data. Make sure you check out my other videos on Gatsby and Tailwind, etc., etc. Anything to do with web development, check out my channel, make sure you subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.